One of my next guests says Bob Chapek needs to go, calling him the worst Disney leader he can remember, adding that the company needs to bring back former CEO Bob Iger. Joining me now, the man who said that, Ross Gerber, president and CEO of Gerber Kawasaki and a Disney investor. I'm also joined by Ivan Feinseth, chief investment officer of Tigers Financial, who has a buy rating and 12-month price target of $229 a share on Disney, which is the highest of all analysts tracked by Bloomberg. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Ross, I want to start with you. Why are you so disappointed in Bob Chapek so far? Well, first, it started with Scarlett Johansson, you know, when he first took over and the way he was handling talent was just horribly done to ultimately end up giving her the same amount of money anyways. And and when you start ruffling feathers with the most talented people in your, you know, movie business, that, that doesn't make sense. And then now we've moved on to political issues where Disney has always had a long history of liberalism and, and sort of educating our society about liberalism through movies and shows and animation. Um, for so long, we, we expose our children to new ideas through Disney. So I found it incredibly poor leadership that an issue as simple as the one in Florida was one that, you know, Chapek waffled on. And it's something that's crucially important in our society today that we have more acceptance of, of all people, and Disney stands for that. So the fact that this was a difficult issue for Chapek to deal with really just makes me doubt his ability as a leader. He should just be an operations person. And that's what I miss about Bob Iger. He was such a, a class act. He was such a gentleman and, and mensch um, and, and just always made Disney look good no matter how difficult the situation is, and, and I'm biased because I'm a big fan of Bob Iger and I miss him, but you know, I, I'd love to see him back. Uh, Ivan, what's your reaction to that, given that you're clearly bullish, you've got such a high price target here, and you must, I believe, believe Bob Chapek is doing a good job. I do. First of all, he became CEO and right as we were going into the pandemic lockdown where travel was shut down movie studios were sh production was shut down theaters were shut down cruise lines were shut down and the parks were shut down and he did a great job stewarding the company um saving cash cutting expenses and investing in uh, the expansion and increased content for Disney Plus and their direct-to-consumer streaming services. So he has gone through a really difficult time. I agree with Ross that Bob Iger was a great CEO, but I don't agree that uh, in, in this unfortunate time that Bob Chapek, I think he did a great job. And he said in his note to Cheryl, to uh, employees, if he took a hard stance either on either side of this position, that it would be used as a political weapon. And I agree, and Disney is a company that, that leads uh, in, in a lot of areas, uh, especially in acceptance, but they are not a political company and they do sidestep controversy whenever possible. So I don't really think he, I think he acted as best he could in somebody in the situation that he's in, but the bigger picture as far as investors, he has so far done a great job as the CEO in a very tough time. And I think he will continue to do so as the parks you know, open and travel opens. You already see that to the extent parks um, have been open. They've had record levels of right. attendance capacity, record ticket prices, record in-park spending. So the company's doing well. And he has grown um, Disney's direct-to-consumer streaming services very well. Ivan, is taking a stand on this bill, though, really a political issue? I mean, Disney has been about inclusion since, you know, as far back as I can remember. I mean, it's a small world after all. Would taking a, 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 a position on this bill from the beginning really have been that political at all? Uh, yes, because it would have been whatever stance he took would have been used against him. By yeah, but Ivan, I'm Ivan, talking. what's wrong with taking a stance against discrimination and having people well, who are for discrimination be against you? See, this is where I see leadership. They, like, run, let, let me finish. Running a park is one thing, and leadership is another. I agree 100%. He, if you put him in a room by himself, he's done a great job operating parks or Disney Plus. But a CEO's job is to be in the public and to represent the values of the business, not just operate the business. That's a CEO's job. And that's where he was and that's where he should be. But when you're talking about leadership 
and being scared to take a position on a, such a simple thing. It is wrong to discriminate against gay people, especially children, in school and to make a law to do that and have any confusion over this because you don't want right-wingers attacking you. Like, this is the problem. People care about the moral values of the CEO as much as it identifies with that company. And now you got people on strike and you got, uh, nobody's happy with what he's done. So, so Ross, here's a question. Look, Bob Chapek got a lot of pushback and then he changed course. He did a 180. That's even worse. He's doing this listening tour. Isn't that leadership when you can admit that you made a mistake? I, yes I, and I no. So. Not if I, the mistake is stupid. Well, All right, I, I, I Ivan, well, Ivan, your thought. I don't believe his stance was stupid, and I do like people who can change their opinion based on information. So uh, the fact that people change their opinion on things, I don't think is negative. I think it's a positive. Disney yeah. has been a supporter of the LGBTQ community for years. They were one of the first companies to extend benefits to same-sex partners over 25 years ago. And they are a extremely inclusive company That's that correct. produces extremely inclusive and enlightening content. And I think he, in given, it's, it's not a a simple stance and it happens to be i mean they have a, a tremendous presence in florida uh, but florida has been a very very politically charged state and uh unfortunately i i think his first reaction of not to take an extreme stance because it would have been used against him and it is being used against him now no matter what position and if he takes a a, a, a more progressive position toward it, he's also being criticized. So you can't criticize him on both sides. But as far as, so my job as a research analyst is to focus on investment opportunities. And as an investment opportunity, I think Disney's brand equity, its industry leadership, the quality of its content, the direct-to-consumer streaming service, and the fact that they get really a tremendous bang for their investment in content, do content dollar, because not only is it on streaming, it's in theaters, it's on Broadway, it's in licensing, it's in driving people to the theme parks, to their cruise right. ships. So they really create a lot of value with their content. And they are, and as I say, in media, content is king, and Disney is the king of content. So here's another like question, Ro Ross. Bob Iger has said he's gone. Any thought that he might come back to this company is quote unquote ridiculous. So if, if Bob Iger's not coming back, who, who is, is the right person to lead the company if not Bob Chapek? Or maybe we give Bob Chapek some more time. So. Howard Schultz just came back. So, you know, you never want to say never um, because I never would have suspected Sh Howard Schultz would be back at Starbucks, which I think will be beneficial for Starbucks. Um, I don't know. I Iger's a very young person for his age, so he certainly has the physical ability to do this, and I think he has moved on from Disney. But I think the correct pick for CEO of Disney should have been Kevin Mayer. It should still be Kevin mm -hmm. Mayer. Kevin Mayer has gone on to do a wonderful job working in many different businesses now. I've met Kevin, and I think he's one of the sharpest people in Hollywood. He's super connected, and he has the type of personality that could have handled this a lot better than Bob. Now, not to say that anything Ivan's saying is incorrect from an investment thesis. I actually own the stock personally and for my firm. Not Ivan actually doesn't. And I'm an activist shareholder. And so what that means is as the owner of the business, I don't like what my CEO is doing. And so I'm talking about that. That's what I'm saying. I, I would like to have the CEO of Disney really re represent the values of Disney. Now, the fact that he's lit going on a listening tour is called placating people. I, I don't think his views are any different. He's just got to placate people. And that's my problem with all this. Oh, he's listening and all this. Well, come on. All right, Ivan, I'm going to let you have the last word here uh, because we, we obviously uh, Rosh put, pushed back on a few things there. Yes, he's, he's right about Howard Schultz, and I think that was good to see at Starbucks. But I think this is a different situation. However, we do own Disney on behalf of clients in accounts that we manage. Our firm policy is that analysts and portfolio managers cannot have personal positions in it. But uh, I do have a buy on the stock, and we do own it on behalf of clients. And it's on our focus opportunity 
uh, research list and uh, portfolio. Yeah, because the disclosure said your firm didn't own the stock. Sorry. Oh, we, we do. I thought it was on there that we did. But um, but I, I think that JPEC, uh, it'll be a learning experience for him and the company. And, and I think the bigger picture is um, a, a company has responsibility to a lot of stakeholders, not only shareholders, but employees, vendors, customers, people who visit to the park. And, um, you know, they have a broad base of clients or customers that view their content, go to the movies, go on their cruise ships, go to the theme park too. So he has a big audience, a big group of stakeholders that he really has to care for. And I think that overall he's done and will do a good job. Well, certainly Disney has a lot of opportunities and challenges ahead. And of course, Chapek himself. I appreciate both of you joining us and coming to play. Ross Gerber, Ivan Fine-Seth will continue.